are going live on YouTube. And Instagram, Instagram, live, live, live. Is everyone excited? Woo! Yep, answers yes. Hi. Welcome, YouTube, 500. Right away? No. Hey guys, start in a few minutes. Make sure you've got a space that is where you can move. Um, make sure that you have blocks. If you haven't got blocks, get maybe, uh, hey as well, blocks. Blanket, cushion, bolster, pillows, um, yeah, get your stuff. We've got all the space today. We have Owen hanging out. Scott, legs up. Charlie, just asleep. Hello. He's already in Shavasana. He's uh, very, very good at Shavasana. <laughs> Okay, on Instagram, I'm going to try and get the, let me fix this up, turning the comments off. If you have anything that you want to say, send it as a direct message. YouTube as well, any, you can always type on the side. I'm probably not going to see it if I'm teaching. Um, if anything happens on Instagram, go over to YouTube. It is uh, YouTube MJ Travis trying to get more subscribers too. Trying to, I think we're nearly at six hundred. Trying to get to a thousand. So if you can help anyway, please. Anyway, today is the double day. I wanted myself to be teaching. Um, I know it's kind of scary for some people um, doing something different, especially if you're just really a yoga person. So. Budokan is uh, something that pushes people out of their comfort zones or boundaries or whatever. So I think it's kind of cool if you at least just try some of it. So Owen's going to be able to break some things down and make it a bit workshoppy so we understand how to do it and then flow a little bit through it. So I'll kind of warm us up and, and yeah. Woo. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> okay. Again, you don't need a mat. Make sure your area is non-slip. Um, blocks, preference, or something that you can squeeze in between the upper thighs when you lie on your back that you can really grip. Blocks are really good just because the size of them, um, and they're very, very useful in a lot of things that we do in class, especially if you're a little bit tighter and you don't have a nice open back line of the body, very flexible and mobile. Um, yeah, uh, I'm going to learn how to talk first. We're going to start on our back though. Have a block next to you. Start on your back. I'm just going to walk around with this bit talking until we get moving in a different way. Um, bring the soles of the feet flat to the ground with the knees bent. Walk your feet wide and let your knees rest together. So hopefully you can all see. Make sure. Okay. Okay. I am going to see if this is a bit better, hopefully. All right. Okay. So, with the feet wide knees as close together without forcing them together. So, it's more just working on the internal rotation of femur to pelvis. And you may need to angle the toes in or out. You might need to bring the feet a little further away from you or closer to the glutes to see what feels better where you don't have to really force the legs in. So just a little bit more of a passive relaxation here, just helping the body to open when we start to work on the hips and give the hips a bit of space. The spine and the hips are both together. So we work movement on the spine, we get some movement of the hips, same of the hips to the spine. We are right behind a helicopter landing pad, so excuse the noise. Bring the arms to goal pose position. Have the palms 
face up. The elbows will come out from the shoulders. If the back of the palms doesn't rest on the ground, have the hands out just a little bit wider so you have less of a bend in the elbows. If it's comfortable, walk the feet just a little wider. We'll start to get active with the legs in a second, but just for now, just relax. Knees together, feet wide. And then just closing the eyes. Breathing in and out. If possible, breathe in and out of the nose. And relax the hands. Notice the fingers are curled or they're a little more open. Breathe down below the navel. The lower torso expand outwards fully. Let everything turn back in towards the spine as you exhale. So one last time. If it's comfortable, walk the feet just a little bit wider. Knees stay together or as close together as they can. You might notice the sensation change around the adductors or hamstrings or maybe in the lower back, around the sacrum. Don't feel it even further down towards the feet. Take three more slow breaths, the back of the head rest. Two more. Just noticing the footprint of the feet on the ground. Is there more weight on the inner or outer foot? One more full inhale. And on the exhale, press the feet flat into the ground, keeping the knees together. So think of the feet pressing down, the knees staying as close together as possible. The pelvis comes kind of even on the ground. So hopefully you feel the left and right side pressing down evenly, the one side's not heavier or more surface area touching than the other. Think of the toes spreading out and pressing down without gripping the toes, just pressing them gently into the ground or maybe the mat if that's where the feet are. Notice again, have the feet rolled out or in? Is there more weight on the outer foot, inner foot? Can it become even? Take a full inhale breath. And a full exhale breath. Keep pressing the knees together, feet to the ground, pelvis left and right side in. One more full breath, full inhale. So this should be just a little bit of work for the lower body. Full exhale. Now keep that pressing. Inhale, lift the hands, fingers point up towards the sky. Keep the elbows on the ground so that goalpost position. Exhale, hands come forwards and down. They might not touch the ground. Depends what the internal rotation of the upper arm is to show. Inhale, fingers point up to the sky. Keep the elbows, triceps on the ground. Exhale, hands come back. Again, you might have less of a bend in the elbows if that works a bit better for you. Inhale, hands up to the sky. Keep the feet flat, elbows on the ground. Exhale, hands forwards and down. Keep the back of the shoulders pressing to the ground. Inhale, hands to the sky. Exhale, hands come back. One more time. Inhale, fingers point up. Shoulders press back. Exhale, internally rotate the arm. Fingers forwards, maybe palms flat. Inhale, hands up to the sky. Keep pressing into the feet, the knees together. Exhale, hands come back behind. Keep the elbows bent as much as you can. Good. Relax the feet. Walk the feet about hip width position. Keep the arms either wide at the goalposts or a T. Exhale, knees drop to the left. Inhale, knees to the centre. Exhale, knees to the right. Just a couple of times. Inhale to the centre. Exhale, knees drop left. Inhale, centre. Exhale, knees drop right. Inhale, knees centre one more time. Exhale, knees drop left. Inhale, center. Exhale, knees drop right. Inhale to the center. Grab your block and put it between your upper, upper thighs. So think of it between the upper thighs. Either have it skinny way or medium side, whatever you can grip best. Now, if it is a, maybe a pillow or a cushion that you're gripping instead, put it between the knees so you can really hold on to it. And again, think of the pelvis nice and even, left and right side, just like what we were doing before, but this time, arms down beside you, 
lift the feet up off the ground. So the knees or the shins come into reverse tabletop, knees 90 degree bend. Flex the toes to the face, press the pelvis down. Think of the ribs pulling into the pelvis and the pelvis staying connected up to the bottom of the ribs. Take a full inhale breath. If the arms are in the way, again, you can bring them wide. Exhale, only about two, three inches, knees towards the left. Right hip on lift, right shoulder stays on the ground. Squeeze whatever you've got between the legs. The block or cushion. Inhale, center. Keep the knees in line of the hips. Exhale to the right. Left hip lifts, left shoulder stays down. So we're only moving a tiny little bit. Inhale, center. Maybe a little further this time. Exhale, left. Maybe about six inches. Inhale, center. So don't go full distance just yet. Exhale, right. Left shoulder stays down. Cinch the ribs in. Inhale, center. Exhale, left. Maybe a little further this time. Inhale, center, exhale, right. Again, maybe a little further. Keep the shoulders on the ground. Inhale, center, two more times each side. Exhale, left, maybe going as far as you can without the shoulders lifting up, really cinching through the ribs and the navel. Inhale, center, exhale to the right. Good, inhale, center, last one. Keep the knees in line of the hips again. Exhale, left, squeeze the block. Inhale, center, last side, exhale, right. Again, pull the ribs in, squeeze the block into the center. Inhale, center, exhale, extend the legs forwards in a diagonal. Inhale, reverse tabletop, bend the knees. Exhale, feet to the ground. So we did this maybe last week or the week before. Inhale, lift the hips up into a bridge pose, Tilting the back of the pelvis to the back of the knees of the chin to get that curve in the neck or on the back of the skull. Exhale, lower the spine back down, then the pelvis. So see if you can really get that articulation of the spine moving separately each vertebrae. Inhale, reverse tabletop, lift the feet off the ground, squeeze your block. Exhale, knees to the left, go as far as you can. Inhale, back to the center. Exhale to the right, keep the shoulders pressing down. Inhale to the center. Exhale, extend the legs forwards. They might come a little lower. Inhale, reverse tabletop the legs. Exhale, feet to the ground. About hip width, squeeze your block. Inhale, lift the pelvis, lift the spine, bridge pose. Think of rolling the block or whatever you have there to down towards the ground. Exhale, slowly articulate back to the ground. One more time, inhale, lift the feet, reverse tabletop. Exhale, knees and feet in one line to the left, squeeze from the outer hips into the center. Inhale to the center. Exhale to the right. Inhale to the center. Keep the ribs hugging in, exhale, extend the legs. Maybe they lower and hover. Inhale, reverse tabletop. Exhale, feet to the ground. This time, bring the arms down by your side. Inhale, bridge pose. Lift the pelvis up. Roll the shoulder heads back beneath you. Think of, again, lengthening the tailbone up to the back of the knees. At the same time, you're pushing the pubic band forward. So we wrap the outer hips up. There's no restriction or compression on the sacrum. You keep it nice and long. Take a couple more breaths here. Press the triceps down, the hands down. Again, we make sure the upper neck is not compressed into the ground before. That's so why we lift the chin a little. If you need a blanket under the head anytime, you can use that too. Whatever you're substituting for a blanket. Take one more full inhale breath. Exhale, slowly articulate the spine back down. We're going to add on a little bit from that bridge. Inhale, slowly lift up. Squeeze your block. Either you stay here with the feet on the ground or you'll come onto the left tiptoes. You have an option to stay on the left tiptoes or lift the left leg off the ground. So you really feel the right glute action. Take an inhale breath. Exhale, left foot back down. Again, you can keep both feet on the ground or you'll come onto the right tiptoes. Think of squeezing the block into the center. Left glute turns on, option to lift the right leg. So really feel the left hip hug in. Take another full breath in. Exhale, right foot down. Keep the hips lifted for an inhale. Again, think nice and long through the back of the body and the front. 
Exhale, slowly lower back down. Remove the block, bring the knees to the chest. Gently rock side to side. And start to grab behind the back of the knees, rock backwards and forwards. You can find a pause, maybe on the pelvis or the shoulders. Until you bring yourself up to a tabletop position. Hands and knees. Actually, we're going to segment this just so we can set ourselves up for uh, what Owen's doing later on. So bring the big toes together, sit your bum down onto your heels. The knees are nice and wide. So that's like a seated child's pose. If you have sensitive knees, support the knees. You can always sit up on something if this is really intense for the body at all. Your hands are going to come either onto the ground. If you don't have quite long enough arms, put your hands up on your blocks or whatever you have. Need the hands on the knees, you can bring them here. But I want you to think of blocking the pelvis out. So you're not going to be able to move the pelvis into oh, tilting forwards or backwards. From here, we're just moving the upper body. So we're going to think extension, which is pulling the chest forwards through the biceps, pelvis, pushes back down onto the hips. And then I want you to think flexion as you round the torso forwards. Don't let the pelvis tuck back and down. Keep it pressing down towards the heels or whatever you're sitting on. Inhale, upper body cow. Lift the chest up, collarbones wide. Keep pressing the hips back. And then exhale, just the upper body. Don't let the mid or especially the low spine start to round here. Again, chest forwards and up, collarbones wide. Press the hips down. So this is very minimal. Exhale, dome the upper spine, feel the thoracic spine, push back. Inhale, lift just the chest up. And exhale as you dome the chest back. One more time, inhale, really block out the pelvis of the chest, pull the shoulder heads back. And exhale, just the upper back, which is back behind you, make push into the chest. And now let's come back to a neutral spine. Coming forwards into a tabletop position, you might use the block, bringing it in front of you. The hands are going to come on either side of the block. You might bring the forehead onto the block. If you don't have a block, interlace your fingers, bring the back of the head into the hands interlaced. The knees will be about hip width. I want you to think the upper back does not move. So here you're blocking the neck spine and the thoracic spine out. So it's just the pelvis that is moving up and down. So as you think, inhale, lift the hamstrings up. So we move into that cow of just the lower spine and pelvis. And then exhale, you pull the hamstrings down to the back of the knees, almost like you're just pulling the lower back behind you in a more curved cat spine. Inhale, cow, the lumbar. Then let the upper body move. Exhale, cat. Keep the elbows and triceps hugging in. Again, like you're blocking it out. Inhale, lumbar, cow. Exhale, lumbar, cat. Again, inhale, lumbar, cow. Lift the tailbone up. Exhale, lumbar, cat. One more time, inhale, pull up through the hamstrings. Exhale, roll the back of the pelvis down to the back of the knees. Let's come to a neutral spine, Whew, up onto hands and knees. So when we block it out and we do that in a way, it's a lot of work. It's not just moving the body through space. Hopefully that's what you guys are feeling as well. In a tabletop position, we are going to go so slow. So we're going to take about three breaths to move into a cat and three breaths into cow, etc. So from here in a neutral spine, I want you to think. Awesome. So you hopefully can see both of our bodies now. So here we're going to start at the pelvis. So think, lift the hamstrings up. Start to pull the navel forwards and down. Start to 
pull the bottom of the rib cage forwards and down. It's like you're collapsing, but still working in the middle of the spine. And now you begin to roll the chest forward slightly, like it's pulling down towards the thumbs and then forwards. And then we pull the front of the chest forwards and up. Maybe we look up with the head. It's really slow, but that's how we're working. And then again, starting at the pelvis. I want you to think, pull the back of the pelvis behind you. Pull the pubic bone towards the chest or the underarms. Two more breaths. Start to feel the lumbar spine round a little bit more, like what we were doing before. Follow that up the spine towards the shoulder blade. Start to puff that up towards the sky. Now pushing the ground away, think of the top of the shoulder blade spreading and then the chin coming into the chest. And then the opposite, start to pull the hamstrings up as we pull the navel forwards and down. Still three breaths, really, really slow. Pull the bottom of the rib cage down towards the ground. Still got the chin tucked, pull the chest forwards out past the fingertips. And now we start to lift the front of the chest up. The bottom of the exhale, we might lift the chin up. And then the opposite, think again. Inhale, start to pull the back of the pelvis back. Move up the spine, exhale. Follow it to the middle of the back, inhale. Slowing it down. Move up towards the bottom of the shoulder blades, exhale. Spread between the upper shoulder blades, inhale. And then start to tuck the chin in towards the chest, exhale. We'll do one more each way that slow. Inhale, breath, start to lift the hamstrings. And then pull the navel forwards and down, exhale. Move the bottom of the front of the rib cage forwards to the thumbs. Start to pull the chest through the thumbs, exhale. One more inhale, spread the collarbones. Exhale, maybe the chin lifts slightly, maybe all the way up. Last three breaths, inhale, breath. Start to pull the back of the pelvis back. Start to pull the navel up into the spine. Follow that up past the lower back. Start to dome the middle back up to the sky. Exhale, start to dome just below the shoulder blades. And then between the shoulder blades, inhale. Complete it fully, chin to chest, exhale. Let's come back to a neutral spine. You need your hands on your blocks. Good. Hopefully, up the two. Tuck your toes forwards. Inhale, hovering tabletop. So hug the triceps in, the outer hips in. Pubic bone reaches back, chest reaches forwards. Exhale, lower the knees to the ground. I'm going to take just a little vinyasa here. Inhale, hover the knees. Exhale, step back to a high plank pose. Notice which foot you started with. Take an inhale breath. Flip the breastplate up. Heels push back. Exhale, downward dog. Hips up and back behind you. Pull from the frontal hip points up and back. Inhale, slide forwards to a high plank pose. Up the spine. Exhale, step back to that hovering tabletop. If you need the knees to come down, bring them down. Take an inhale breath. Again, ribs up, chest forward, pubic bone back. Exhale, knees down. Good again. Inhale, lift the knees. Start with the opposite leg first. Exhale, step back, high plank. Stay here for an inhale breath. Pull the pelvis and ribs together. Exhale from the hips downward facing dog. Inhale, roll forwards to a high plank. Exhale, opposite foot steps, hovering tabletop. Take an inhale breath again, pull the chest forwards, hips back. Down, knees to the ground. 
crown tabletop. <laughs> Let's pivot our left foot out to the side and move into a modified side plank. Right leg extends down, right hand lifts up to the sky. Tuck your left hip towards the right heel. Option if you need to bend the left elbow. To be able to roll the left shoulder back, please do that. Seal the outer right foot to the ground. Inhale, right arm over the ear, reach. Exhale, right hand back to the right thigh. Let's bring it down towards the ground this time. Take an inhale, arm over the ear again, utita. And then exhale, hands to the ground, tabletop position. Pivot the right toes out to the right side. Extend the left leg long, hand, knee and foot in one line. Left hand up to the sky. And press that upper left foot down. Should have got a haircut. Put it all off. Again, a little tiny bit in the right elbow so you can roll the right shoulder head back. Lengthen the right hip to the left heel so stay nice and long from the underarm to the hip. Left arm up to the side. Shoulders pull back, ribs pull in. Inhale, left arm over the ear. So the left foot to the ground. Bring the arm towards me. Yeah. Exhale, left hand back to the left hip. Now we're going to go down to the ground. Take an inhale, fingers all the way through to a tita, arm over the ear. And then let's roll forwards. Exhale, hand with knee down, tabletop. Let's add on to that. Option left foot out to the side or keep it pointed to the back of the mat. Inhale, modified side plank. Right hand up to the sky. If the left foot's pointed to the right foot, option to lift the left foot off the ground like you're hovering on the left knee or balancing on the left knee, pull the shoulders back. Inhale, right arm over the ear. Exhale, right hand to the right thigh. Bring the hand down towards the ground, sweep past the knee, the left hand, utita arm over the ear, turn the nipples to the sky, hugging the arm and the hip in, right hip, left arm. Exhale, hand and right knee to the ground. Again, same option. Either you put the right foot out to the side or you keep it pointing to the back of the mat. You have an option here to lift the right foot off the ground, balancing on the right knee. So again, left foot tugging in, right shoulder hands in towards one another. Inhale, left thumb over the ear. Exhale, left hand down to the left hip. Inhale, left arm comes over the ear. Turn the chest towards the sky. Ooh. Exhale, hand and knee down. We're going to add on one. Last time. <laughs> Modified side plank. This time I suggest you turn the toes out to the side as we have an option to lift the right foot up off the ground. Again, shoulders pull back. Either you stay here, same option to keep the right foot down like before, or you'll bend the right foot, reach the right hand back, Kick into the right hand and pull the front ribs in. So with the right hand holding the right foot, shoulders pull back, left glute is hugging towards the right knee. Take one more full inhale breath. One more full exhale. Press the left fingers down into the ground, heel of the hand. Ooh, hey. <laughs> inhale, extend the arm up, leg out. Exhale, hand and knee down. Take it to the other side. Either foot on the ground, option that the foot is lifted, hug the shoulders back, you can always stay here, bring the left foot back down if you need, or bend the left knee, reach the left hand back. Grab the top of the foot, start to kick back. If you need to pull the foot in first and then kick back, that's an option. Right hip starts to hug towards the left knee. The gaze is where you can find balance. Keep pressing into the right fingers. Start to hug the front ribs in. Take another full breath in. Then a full breath out. Right butt cheeks hugging up to left knee. Inhale, extend arm and leg. Exhale, bring it back. Table top. Do one breath this time. Inhale, cow. Start at the pelvis, tummy down, chest forwards and up. Exhale, dome for cat, roll up the spine. Inhale, cow, tailbone lifts, tummy down, chest forwards, collarbones wide. Exhale, dome for cat. Let's bring the hips back to the heels, knees wide. Coming down into child's pose. 
Inhale, fingertips onto the ground, spider fingers. So we think of the elbows, the wrists, everything lifting except just the fingertips. Move this from the shoulders. So feel the shoulders control this. Exhale, palms flat down. Again, inhale, spider fingers. Exhale, palms flat. One last one, inhale, spider fingers. Exhale, palms flat. Inhale, let's come up to a hero's pose. So this time bring the knees together. Have the feet wide. So much hair trouble today. Sit in between the heels. Now if that means that you sit up on a block, sit up on cushions, whatever, to make this comfortable. If you got really big calves, you might need to roll the calves out. Again, working on internal rotation. If possible, the toes are pointed back, the heels are hugging either whatever you're sitting on or your hips. And now I want you to think of moving the shoulders. You're going to hold opposite elbows. We are going to move just the shoulder area. So think, lift the shoulders up towards the ears. Pull the shoulders back as far as they can go. Keep the ribs in and down. Depress the shoulders down towards the heels. And now pull it forwards. Again, shoulders lift up. Shoulders pull back. Shoulders down. Shoulders forwards. Lift them up. We're going to reverse from here. Shoulders down. Back. Swap the opposite hand on top. With the shoulders back, lift up. Forwards and up. Forwards and down, back and down. One more full rotation. Back and up, forwards and up, <laughs> forwards and down, back and down. Whew. Bring the arms forwards, palms face one another. Cross the right arm on top of the left. This gets a little tricky sometimes. I might face you guys so you can see. Again, if sitting like this is not comfortable, you don't have to. You can sit up as high as you need. You can extend the legs forwards. So with the right arm on top of the left, turn the hands to face one another. Interlace the fingers. Bend the elbow so the hands come down towards the legs. Pull the hands back through towards the chest like you're threading them through. Keep the palms connected. Go only as far as it's comfortable. If your fingers start to let go, if it's hurting, Stop there. Think of what works for your body. If this is way too intense, keep the hands back towards you. Squeeze the palms together. And then slowly undo, bring the arms back forwards. Keep the grip of the fingers. Release the grip of the fingers. Now just put the left hand on top. Interlace. Again, bend the elbow so the hands point down to the legs. Back through the chest. Elbows come closer together. Keep the palms connected, fingers connected. Stop where you need to on this side. And this side's probably going to be very different than the other. Still breathing down deep past the navel. Squeeze the hands together, fingers together. One more full inhale. Slowly unravel. Bring the arms back through. Roll the wrists. Oof. Okay. <laughs> Intense, right? Okay. Uh, we're going to do one little flow and then I'm going to go into Right. Let's come back to our tabletop position. Tuck the toes forwards. Inhale, hover the knees. Keep the feet short to hands. Exhale, downward facing dog. Keep that shorter distance. Inhale, right leg to the sky. Exhale, bend the knee, open the hip. Inhale, option to straighten the leg here. Exhale, right foot outside of the right wrist. Again, if you need blocks under the hands for any of this, lower the back knee. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, plant the palms, tuck the back toes. Firm the back thigh, inhale, three-legged dogs, right leg lifts up. 
Exhale, downward facing dog. Again, take that shorter stance. Inhale, lower the knees. Exhale, cat pose, dome the spine. Inhale, come to a neutral spine, tuck the toes. Exhale, tabletop. Hover the knees, inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, bend the knee, open the hip. Push the right heel down. Either keep the knee bent or inhale, straighten the leg. On the exhale, we'll shift forward, step the left foot outside the left wrist, lower the back knee. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, plant the hands, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. Firm the back thigh. Inhale, three-legged dog, left leg lifts up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, tabletop position. Now it's Owen's turn. Yay! Okay. Right. So excited. It's going to be fun. Hi, my name's Owen. I have uh, a figure week in a row. Uh, we're doing Sabutacon, and um, the feedback has been to slow down <laughs> and, uh, and, just, and just break it down. So it's actually, I mean, the real Buddha comp practice is like an hour and 15 minutes long. It's a fixed sequence. And the first several times I took it, I was like, what the heck is going on here? Um, and I, for me, that was exciting. But I know that for some people, that, that might not be so exciting. But it also takes practice, just like yoga is a practice, just like anything else. And NJ did a really good job of the spinal articulation stuff. And that's a huge part of it. So we're gonna really focus on uh, spinal articulation today. Um, the huge philosophy behind Budokan um, in a really traditional yoga is that in traditional yoga, there's big poses, and then there's um, you know like you go from like warrior, like warrior two to reverse warrior, and people just sort of get there. Um, in Budokan, they put a lot of emphasis on every second of every movement um, with intention and beauty and grace and all that kind of stuff. And the word vinyasa means to flow. So vinyasa yoga, the word literally is dedicated to in between. So um, maybe you can carry the the really like the push for paying attention to the vinyasa into your traditional yoga practice and make it more beautiful. So um, just going into uh, Buddha Khan, we start in hero's pose. Um, it's called seiza. Typically we'd be meditating, but Take your right hand, make an L with your thumb and your forefinger, set it down on the hand on, on the ground in front of you. Take your left hand, make a diamond on the ground with your hands. Bow your head into that diamond and say, oh. Thanks, <laughs> Good. Come on up. Walk your hands forward to the front of your mat. They come to the tabletop. And MJ did a really great job of um, breaking down the articulation of um, the spine, but I'm going to focus a little bit more on where it starts. And um, in the Buddha Pump practice, it starts in your hips. So first, I want you to just start like sticking your you know tailbone up in the air, and NJ said raising your hamstrings up, and then you know tucking your tailbone under toward your belly button, and just literally focusing on just that lower part of your spine. And NJ's doing a great job of it. Tough to Push ups. Uh, <laughs> Charlie's, um, so he's in his middle spine. So try not to move your middle spine and just roll the front of your hips down and up. Okay? It's, um, if there's cheerleaders out there, I hate to offend you, but like I've had people say that they call that anterior pelvic tilt where your butt is like lifted up and your um, hamstrings are lengthened while you're shortening your hip flexors. They call that the cheerleader. You know, like butt back, boobs out, sort of thing. But um, in this situation, so, like we're gonna like really focus on articulating that and maybe countering, you know, this this typical stance where people, you know, just sit with their butt out and their chest out. So let's go ahead and continue with that articulation of just your pelvis, like rotating the head. And MJ's doing a great job. 
and just rotating this way and rotating that way. This is what your hips should feel like. If you've never done this in your life, this is going to be a new thing. This is why um, this practice, it takes people time to get because they really never think about like what their hips do. And so continue with that rotation. Now, I want you to, on the next one, tuck your tailbone under to your, toward your belly button and continue to let, and MJ talked about it, letting that roll up through your spine and pushing the ground away with your hands, this like spreading of your shoulder blades, this rounding in your upper spine. Go ahead and let your head tuck down a little bit. This is called cobra hood. All right, it's gonna come up several times throughout the practice. So if I ever say cobra hood, cobra hood is you pushing the ground away, you round it in your upper spine in that really deep cat pose. And right now it should feel like the middle of your spine is being pulled up towards the ceiling or the sky, wherever you're practicing, inside or outside. And then continue to let that, like, your hips rotate down so that, you're, again, your hamstrings are lengthening. And then, you know, let your belly drop and roll up so your chest comes forward into out. So I, I've kind of taken my own version of this, and I like, want to make it a beautiful movement or a continual movement. So. It, now you're incorporating your arms, and Scott, Scott called it sexy cat cow, but basically you're like rotating through your hips, but that spinal articulation for right now, and depending on which direction you're going in, is starting in that cobra hood and rolling back, and then finding that articulation all the way through your spine with your hips. Now you can reverse that, send your hips forward, let your belly drop, and then roll back. There you go. MJ's out. And you kind of like roll forward. And it really starts in your hips. Where you're articulating back and forth through the anterior pelvic tilt, that posterior pelvic tilt. And again, if it's something you've never done, it's going to take a minute to figure out. And again, you can go in both directions. So I think we've done enough with that. We're going to go ahead and take this one more step. Walk your hands forward to the front of your mat and just lower yourself all the way down to the ground. So we have a good understanding of what our hips can do as far as like rotating forward, rotating back, doing that anterior, posterior pelvic tilt. What we want to do is there's another, um, there's a, a movement in Budokan called uh, rolling cobra, cobra roll. And so what you're gonna do is have your toes tucked and let the push of your toes send your knees wide. So that basically your chest is on the ground and your hips are up in the air. And what you need to do to make this work is you need to roll your tailbone forward toward your belly button. So again, you're going from that articulation where you have that posterior pelvic toe to the anterior to the posterior. So roll your hips up and back. Okay. <laughs> and back. It might feel weird, but you know it's an articulation that a lot of people are not doing. That's important to this practice. So, you just got it. Okay. So again, her hips roll. Okay, and then her hips drop down to the ground. So again, it's go ahead and turn sideways for me, Charlie. Let's go ahead and see two different people. It's like her sideways, so they can't see. Face up. There you go. Cool. All right. So he's got his hips up in the air, and then what he needs to do is he needs to roll his hips like that. He's going to take his tailbone and tuck it under towards his belly button. So tuck literally rotate your hips. <laughs> Get your hips up, come on. And then rotate your hips this way. Sort of. Sort of. It's tough, right? All right. Charlie's an athlete, all right? And you know, we're good at these things, but it's tough to do. So we're gonna keep practicing this stuff. But this cobra roll, and again, he's like on the concrete now. But the cobra roll with your hands on the ground, right next, you know, your thumbs are by your nipples, toes are tucked, you're gonna push your knees forward. So that your hips goes wide, you're going to untuck your toes so the tops of your feet go into the ground. You're going to roll your tailbone under toward your belly button and continue to let that roll come up through your spine. 
so that your chest is facing forward into upward dog. Go ahead and lower yourself down. We're going to go through that a few times. I want you to get the idea that, so again, toes tugs, push your knees forward, roll, untuck your toes to the tops of your feet or on the ground, roll your tailbone under toward your belly button, continue to let that roll come up until your chest goes forward and your gaze goes forward. We're going to lower it down one more time. We're going to do this two more times. Tuck those toes. Push your knees forward and wide. Your hips raise up. Untuck those toes. Roll your tailbone under toward your belly button. Continue to let it roll up through your spine so that your gaze and your head comes up last. You got it? You feel okay? Yeah. Yep. Cool. One more time. Tuck your toes. Knees forward. Tops of the feet on the ground. Roll under. Continue to let that roll come up. By the way, if you're ever in a back bend, squeeze your glutes to protect your lower back. I know somebody that started doing this practice is like, my back hurt. All right, it's because they would just dump into it, let it go. Squeeze your glutes so that your back, lower back is protected. And then go ahead and let yourself lower down to the ground. Tuck your toes, push yourself up into plank. And then basically we're gonna do another movement that's called rolling away. Tuck your chin into your chest, send your hips high, push the ground away, find that cobra hood. With your hips high and your toes high, let your weight drift back until your heels settle down on the ground. Okay, this is Budokan's version of a Chaturanga Vinyasa. So the beginning of it is downward dog, fingertips spread wide, pushing the ground away, one line of energy from your fingertips to your tailbone, shift up high on your toes, let your weight drift forward, push the ground away, find that cobra hood. As your weight drifts forward and your shoulders pass your hands, your hips have to go down to the ground. Let your hips drop and let that roll continue up through your spine into upward dog. To roll back from this, put your chin in your chest, push the ground away, find your cobra hood, let yourself roll back and drift back all the way to downward dog. We're going to do it one more time. Shift up high into your toes, keep your chin tucked in your chest, shift your weight forward, push through your cobra hood, let yourself roll forward, let your shoulders pass your hands. Let your hips drop down to the ground with your toes tucked, let your chest and your gaze come up for upward dog. Tuck your chin into your chest, push into your cobra hood, send your hips high, high up onto your toes, and roll back to downward dog. Go ahead and come to your knees for just a second. Shake those arms out. Everybody's hands over your shoulder. Awesome. Awesome. Good. Move all of them. How are you doing today? Is having hand trouble? Trouble. My God! <laughs> I was just like, feeling good. Do you have anything to say? Huh? Very cool. All right, cool. So that's like the spinal articulation. It's very, if you feel mechanical about things, like really work on these movements, like on a daily basis. I know people that practice it all the time, and it takes them, you know, a while. But once you get this, then you have like strength and flexibility and power in your spine and in your hips, especially that maybe you didn't have before. So we're gonna go through, huh? Five minutes, wow, I got five minutes, sweet. I'm gonna see, um, we're gonna flow through a little bit. So let's go ahead and find that tabletop, tuck your toes, send your hips high, okay? We did Archer last week with a double block. I always think this is like the signature Budokan thing. So if you've been doing it for the last couple weeks, this is your chance again to practice it. So inhale your right leg high. Shift up high on your toes, bend your right foot, so the right knee so your right foot comes through. Bring your knee forward to your chest, push that ground away, find that cobra hood. Gently set your right foot down in between your hands. Turn both of your hands into fists. Draw the bow back with your right hand, okay? As you do, let your shoulders stack on top of each other. Let your twist happen through your spine. And keep your gaze where your hand is at because that's where you know, basically you're going to be tacky. By the way, Budokan is um, like a kind of a blend of martial arts and yoga. So I'm going to use things like block, attack, strike, weapon. Inhale to rise up into archer. Okay. So here we are. It's basically, you know, here we are. We're in archer. You're going to release that bow with your right hand. Okay. As you do, let your hand turn into an arrow and fly forward. Sweep your left hand back, opening up into warrior two. In this practice, our palm is present is up because we're presenting our weapon. We're being attacked from the right, which is weird because we're facing opposite directions. I'll just match MJ for right now. 
Let's go this way. It's actually kind of cool this way. So we're going to initiate something called a double block, and this is really what I want everybody to, to also practice. So you're going to sweep your left hand up, right hand down. As you do, you're going to move your feet through horse, warrior two, to the back of your mat. You're going to let your forearms come to rest on top of each other in line with your leg that's down at an angle. You're going to slide your hands apart, blocking down to the right, up into the left. Okay. Take your hand, your right hand, circle it back and around toward your hip. Grab a knife that's at your hip. You're going to plunge it forward. As you do, shift warrior two feet back to the front of your mat, reaching to the right, back into the left for deep reaching warrior. Lower your right hand down to the ground, but back to the left. Watch it travel through the sky. Again, every second, every movement with intention and beauty of the hand drop down to the ground, rotate on the ball of your left foot. Inhale your right leg high, and three-legged dog. With a straight leg, let your right foot come down to meet your left. Tuck your chin into your chest, shift up high into your toes. Let your weight drift forward through your cobra hood. Let your hips drop down to the ground. Drop your dog. Tuck your chin into your chest, push through your cobra hood. Let your hips rise up, back up onto your toes, back into downward dog. Save your left leg high. Find three-legged dog. Find balance hips, find that demi point your foot, shift up high into your right toes, bend your left knee so that your left foot comes by your left glutes. Bring your left knee and your chest round your spine, push through that cobra hood, gently step down to low lunge. Turn both of your hands into fists, draw that bow back with your left hand, twist your spine, stack your shoulders, have your gaze toward your right hand, and rise to archer. Release that bow, let the arrow fly forward, sweep your right hand back, open up warrior two. Initiate that double block, left hand up, right hand down, shift warrior two feet to the back of your mat, slide your hands apart, so you're blocking down into the left, up into the right, grab that knife from your hip, circle it through, warrior two back in the front of the mat, deep reaching warrior, lower your left hand down, look up at your right, get all the way down to the ground for low lunge, inhale that left leg high, we're going to blend vinyasas. Shift forward into plank. Exhale your chest all the way down to the ground. Keep your toes tucked. Push your knees forward and wide for cobra roll. Untuck your toes. Roll your tailbone under toward your belly button. If you need to let that roll up through your spine. Finding outward dog. Tuck your chin into your chest. Push through your cobra hood. Stay your hips high. Untuck one toe at a time. Into downward dog. So go ahead and come down to your knees. Let's slide it back. Yeah, that was his workshop. He was like, I'm make it. Slide your back. Make sure you have a block nearby. Bring the soles of the feet flat to the ground, knees bent. Arms down by your side. Inhale, bridge pose, lift the pelvis up. Roll the outer hips up. So like yesterday, inhale, lift the arms straight up to the sky. Turn the palms face up to the sky like you're raising the roof. Bend the elbows, bring the fingers down towards the ground next to the ears. Inhale, hands back up to the sky. Exhale, arms down by your side, lower the hips at the same time. Do that again, inhale, pelvis lifts, arms lift up. Thumbs up to the sky, exhale, bend the elbows, elbows point forwards, hands beside the ears. They might not touch the ground, that's okay. Pull the elbows in, ribs in. Inhale, hands back up to the sky. Keep wrapping the outer hips up, inner thighs down, push down into the big toe mounds. Exhale, arms and hips back down at the same time. See if you can coordinate the two. Again, inhale, arms and pelvis lift up, palms face up, fingers point back. Try and pull the fingers towards the front of the forearms. Exhale, bend the elbows, hands beside the ears. Either you'll do what we just did before, lifting the arms back up, or you'll lift, press into the hands, elbows hugging, come up into a wheel pose, shoulders off the ground, maybe up here on the tiptoes if that works for you. Exhale, tuck the chin into the chest, lower back down. You're going to do that a couple more times. Lower the hands back down. That's the same. Inhale, pelvis and arms lift up. Arms face up to the sky, exhale, bend the elbows, bring the hands next to the ears. Again, either stay here or inhale, 
push up to wheel pose, maybe coming up onto the tiptoes, outer hips rocking up. Exhale, tuck the chin, lower back down, hands back to the ground. Last time, inhale, hips lift up, arms lift up, hands to the sky, fingers point back, past the crown of the head, it can stay here. We'll bend the elbows, exhale, hands beside the ears, elbows hug in, option to come up and get wheel pose. Exhale, tuck the chin, back of the head down, shoulders down, arms down. Let the knees sway left and right. You can pause on one side a little longer if that feels good. Arms, if it feels good with the arms back behind you, let them rest back. The legs don't have to come to the ground, they can sway side to side a little bit more superficially. Couple more breaths here. Make sure that you feel even or you feel good on both sides for what you need. Bring the legs back to the center. Lift the hips up, grab your block, supported bridge, block goes under the pelvis. Have it as high as you need, put the arms and legs where it feels good. That might mean that the legs extend, you might take a full butterfly, like we started that constructive rest, broken bridge, knees to get the feet wide. Make sure again that the neck is not flat. If you need to lift the chin or put something under the back of the head, another option is lifting the feet up to the sky. Free to running. So make this a comfortable place for you right now. Arms where it feels good, head and shoulders rest. If this is a lot of compression at the sacrum or the low back, you might need to be a little bit more active and actively tuck the pelvis down towards the foot end of the mat. If the legs are lifted, you might want to open the feet wide. You may want to bend the knees towards the chest. Just think of this as a little bit of time to explore. We'll take one more breath here. And you can stay right here as your resting pose. Otherwise, release the feet to the ground. You'll lift the hips up, remove the block, lower the pelvis back to the ground. Just stay here for two breaths. Think about where you would like to put the body as your resting position. And then place it there if that means arms and legs wide in Shavasana, option blocks under the knees. Let's start with blocks under the spine and the head for butterfly. Whatever does feel best for you right now. Close the eyes, let go of any breath control. Let the body surrender fully. Let it get heavy here. The breath is just up in the chest. Listen to what is around you. What can you hear in your mind? without differentiating those noises, just noticing them. Could be pleasant, could be non-pleasant. They might be loud, they might be soft, they might be coming from your body, someone else's or something else. As we are running out of time on Instagram, I highly suggest that you just stop this or you can just stay right where you are. If you are ready to move back into this amazing day, whatever it is for you right now, deepen the breath, move the body. And so you can stretch your knees in. We'll then bring ourselves up to a seated position. Again, I highly suggest you stay in your Shavasana. Just allow yourself to go nice and deep. Just deep in awareness, deep in being present. If you are coming up to a seat, welcome to sit on your props, hands lightly on the legs, the lap, the heart, eyes can be open or closed. I want you to think of one thing that has occurred to today, that has occurred today, to you today, that you can be grateful for. It's one thing that you have learnt situation, 
maybe discussion, whatever it is. What have you learned today? What are you grateful for today? One thing that happened. Thank that for leaving with the hands now to the grand thumbs to the third eye. Thank all of you. We bow in that gratitude. Namaste. Thank you, guys. I hate rushing to finish this. Thank you, guys. But Instagram, this will be over at uh oh. <laughs> okay. Instagram, go on. YouTube, it'll be here. Please subscribe. Tell other people to subscribe. Let's get over. We've got, we need four more hundred. Four more hundred? Four more hundred. For a thousand. Yes. A thousand subscribers. Yay! Pardon? 1,200. 1,200? We've got a thousand. We're going for 1,200. We're going for 1,200. Thank you so much, everybody. Please subscribe, share it. Owen, my, his uh, Instagram, send me a message if you want to know anybody's details or anything, um, message, comment, thumbs up, thumbs up, please. Mwah, mwah, mwah. We love you guys. Thank you, Owen. And thank, thank you, guys. It. Please, feedback, comment. See you soon. So good. Charlie's dead.